Hello, welcome to the Monday, May 16th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, we got a couple good diaries for the weekend. Uh, let's start uh, with uh, Friday. Friday, I wrote up a quick review of all the different exploits that we have seen over the last week for the big IP vulnerability CVE 2022-1388. So it was just about a week earlier that we learned about the vulnerability. Uh, researchers were pretty quickly in announcing that they found exploits for the vulnerability, but uh, took till Monday morning for actually an exploit to become public and the actual exploitation of the vulnerability to start. We saw a real fast ramp up in exploitation attempts, uh, first starting with some simple ID and who am I checks uh, to basically profile the system, then immediately followed uh, by backdoors and web shells that were installed, including the uh, couple destructive uh, tags that we noted uh, earlier. Finally, on Thursday then, uh, we did see how the Mirai botnet actually incorporated uh, this particular exploit. We recovered it in a sample that hit one of our undergraduate interns' uh, honeypots. So what this really means is that the vulnerability sort of has run its course. At this point, you should expect that pretty much every vulnerable system has been exploited. There hasn't been a lot sort of what I would consider targeted, like only very few exploit attempts, for example, took advantage of specific uh, big IP uh, commands. For the most part, they just treated it like a Linux system, which of course it is, and uh, ran basic uh, Linux exploits, in some cases just copying, for example, web shells into the appropriate directory. Also, pretty much no patching happening by the attackers, which of course then leads uh, to a multiple exploitation of the same system. If you do have a vulnerable exposed uh, F5 a big IP device in your network, assume that it has been compromised multiple times by now. Now, another thing that we didn't see and probably wouldn't really see well in our honeypots is any sort of interaction of the attacker then with traffic passing through the big IP device or for example, leveraging the foothold they have now in the big IP device for additional access to your network. But well, uh, we have new vulnerabilities coming. I mentioned late last week the Cell vulnerability. Personally, haven't seen any exploitation of it yet. Shadow Server reported seeing some. It's such a trivial to exploit vulnerability. I would have expected more by now. But we also have a new vulnerability from SonicWall. Now, there are actually three vulnerabilities being patched here. The most severe one, CVSS score of 8.2, an unauthenticated access control bypass, then CVSS score of 6.1 URL redirection to an untrusted site. So an open redirect could easily be used for phishing. And finally, CVSS score of 5.7, a use of a shared and hard-coded cryptographic key. So very standard vulnerabilities for these devices. None of the quick uh, remote code execution vulnerabilities, but still a sonic wall does recommend that you patch quickly. And this vulnerability affects SMA 6200, 6210, 7200, 7210, and 8000 V. But it's not just firewall appliances that have issues, also host-based firewalls. Sone Alarm by Checkpoint did release a patch last week uh, that fixes approach escalation vulnerability in Sone Alarm. And we had recently a lot of talk about expired email domains, email accounts, and how to use that to take over, for example, NPM package repositories. Matthew Bryant now wrote a blog post where he actually did try it in practice and also looked into uh, bypassing some of uh, the countermeasures put in place by NPM. The particular account that uh, he attempted to hijack here was uh, used for a fairly uh, important 
package that's part also of Angular, the famous uh, web framework, and had 5 million weekly downloads. As often reported before, the email domain that was used by the maintainer was uh, no longer maintained, was expired. So what happened next was is that uh, Matthew uh, did uh, take over uh, that particular domain base, just re-registered it, and then attempted a password reset. However, the first attempt was blocked. What happened was that apparently if uh, there are a lot of bounces to an email address that uh, the account gets disabled and a normal password reset is no longer possible. However, what happened next uh, sort of invalidated the security feature. Matthew just contacted support and asked for his account to be reinstated, which of course immediately happened. Given that so much has been written about this particular issue lately, it's uh, probably important for NPM to come up with some stronger ways to lock accounts that are no longer reachable and, well, don't know if I have a good idea for them to actually then re-enable the accounts once a valid developer reactivates it. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.